APC, All Progressive Congress, they are now addressing the nation in their press conference. Let's take a listen. We are particularly concerned and call on the state security services and the Nigeria police force to immediately restrain persons such as Melaye, Momodu, and a certain pastor, Paul Enenche of Dunamis Church. They should be restrained from their clear calls to violence. Melaye's tweets threatening violence, Momodu going on TV to announce the purported winner, and Enenche's hate speech from the pulpit clearly violate every law of the land. They should not go scot-free. When failure stared them in the face, rather than accepting the outcome with dignity like good Democrats would, some sore losers began shopping for ways to cut corners or scuttle the process. We have seen so many doctored results giving false victory to the Labour Party in places where it performed abysmally poor. The idea was to give its followers hope and prepare them for a planned street insurrection. The PDP has employed almost similar tactics despite secretly admitting defeat. They went about with mouth-watering offers looking for willing partners that would help them to subvert the will of the people. Perhaps, having failed to procure officials to help it to doctor results, the PDP earlier today rented willing television station airwaves to make very dangerous statements on the election. We also wonder why agents of the party at the Abuja Collation Center are pushing insistently for the uploading of the results on the INEC portal when Section 60 of the Electoral Act is clear about who has the power to do so at the polling unit. The state coalition officer has no such power. The INEC chairman who collects what has been collated from the states also has no such power. Is the PDP therefore calling for the upload to enable it hack the system? To give it a false victory? Unlike what the PDP spokesmen have done, we will not announce ourselves as winners despite having the figures which affirm our anticipated victory. We will abide by the laws by allowing the electoral umpire to do its job. A cursory look at the figures from across the states show that our candidate is well placed for victory. The results have shown that the Labour Party, as we kept saying, is no threat nationally to our victory. The PDP, on the other hand, has also failed in its own permutation, making its dream of victory go up in smoke. The PDP's projection of a landslide win in the North has absolutely collapsed. For example, the PDP celebrated victory in Katsina State was only with a difference of less than 7,000 votes. On the other hand, the APC maintains a comfortable lead of over 30,000 and 150,000 in nearby Jigawa and Zamfara states, respectively. The bad news for PDP, however, is its dismal performance in Kano where the APC is imagined with over 600,000 votes difference ahead of the PDP. This is a monumental figure which offsets the PDP in the entire North. The trend is the same in the South, where PDP is very poor showing in Lagos or your rivers and other key states spell doom for the party. The little gains made by the PDP in the South, South and Southeast are too little to compensate for the party's huge deficit suffered in the Southwest. In the North Central, the APC has decimated all parties to a comfortable majority vote in Kwara, Kogi, and Niger. Our impressive show in Benue, FCT, and Plateau is also pushing PDP into third position in those places. Taken together, we are very upbeat as the numbers do not lie. We call on the opposition to stop the macabre dance of a dying horse 
and embrace defeat honorably. There can still be honor in defeat. We once again call for maturity and restraint. Nigerians have spoken through the ballots and the umpire must be allowed to do its work without harassment or blackmail. Security agents should stay on alert and deal with individuals and groups who are planning to foment trouble. Election is not war. This is democracy at play. And everybody in this country knows that our own candidate, our presidential candidate, is a co committed Democrat who has a track record and antecedents in deepening democracy, fighting for democracy, nurturing democracy, and therefore is the only avatar of democracy in this game. We once again thank Nigerians for subscribing to our message of renewed hope and ask our supporters to remain calm and hopeful as we will ensure that their votes are not manipulated by any ethnic power mongering person, subversive elements, or serial losers. Thank you, gentlemen. Well <clears throat> yeah, so. Great. Uh, thank you. Please, by Okay, I think as an addendum to that, <clears throat> um, issues have been raised regarding the legal provision of of loading results because that is the core of their complaint. So, I don't think we, we would like to address that. We will not be here and. I think you know, and, and, and skip that. Yeah, we go, won't skip go, that. Go, go that is the it. crux of all the complaint going on. Mm -hmm. That results must be uploaded before they are announced at the collation center. So we don't want to run away from that issue. And I think it is incumbent on us to, to address that issue. Now, let, let, me, let me attempt to do this. Um, I don't is it okay? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Your voice is loud enough. Is it okay? Your voice is loud enough. Right. Now, now, the conduct of elections, the counting of votes, and the declaration of results are regulated by four, three or four documents. One, the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Two, the Electoral Act, which subsequently gives powers to INEC to make regulations for the conduct of those elections. And so you now have also the INEC regulations and guidelines. In that order, first, it is a constitution that is supreme. In its supremacy, what the concern mainly does in Schedule 3 is to establish INEC and gives INEC the general powers to conduct elections into all offices you know, at the federal level in Nigeria and the FCT. That is for the Constitution. Now, the Electoral Act, if you see, the Constitution now says that the ways by which INEC should conduct those elections should be regulated by an act of the National Assembly. That is what the Constitution says in Chapter 3, in Chapter 3. Now, that is what gave the National Assembly the powers to then make the Electoral Act what does the Electoral Act say? Because I'm coming to this issue of IREV and uploading results. The Electoral Act, if you look at Section 60 of the Electoral Act, Section 60 clearly prescribes the mode by which results are entered step by step until the announcement of the result. In fact, the provisions begin from Section 45 all through to Section 68. Go and look at those provisions. It talks about manual entry of those results in different forms, from the unit level, to the world level, to the local government level, to the state level, and then to the national coalition center. That is the provision of the electoral. Take note, in all of these provisions I've mentioned, there has been no provision regarding uploading results to an INEC, to an IREV, or somewhere you view the results publicly. It is a, it is postponed to section 70 now, where INEC now said, well, that says that, well, um, INEC can still make 
guidelines. Because the electoral gives final powers to make guidelines for the conduct of those elections. It is that in those guidelines that you will now see that INEC makes provision for the declaration of results. Now, before that, even, let me draw your attention to section 68 of the electorate. Section 68 says that when results have been declared, those results will be posted on a site, a public you know, place for everybody to see, and on INEX website. That is what the law itself says, the Electoral Act. It is after the declaration of results. So, those provisions you then see in the guidelines about uploading results to an IREV and all that, they are not strictly in tandem with the provisions of our law. The Constitution, the Electoral they Act, they are arrangements made for INEC for ease of the process. And if you look at all the Supreme Court decisions, there's no Supreme Court decision that has said that the guidelines of INEC override the provisions of both the Electoral Act and the Constitution. In fact, all the provisions, all the, all the decisions by the Supreme Court, all the decisions, it was on the basis of that, if you remember, that the other thing they used for accreditation, what's it called? This was not the other one, the one before that. Card reader was declared not allowed by the Supreme Court. That the Electoral Act, that the, the uh, register is still supreme, if you remember. That is that is so the Supreme Court because those provisions, first of all, appeared in guidelines of INEC. But then when people insisted, there are many cases, many cases in 2015 and 2019, where litigants who lost insisted that the provisions of the guidelines were not followed. What did the Supreme Court say? Supreme Court said, look, the guidelines were just for the ease of the process of INEC, that the major provision of the law is as prescribed by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Electoral Act. So, gentlemen, what you are seeing going on in uh, PDP is drama without substance. It is drama without substance in law. So, we are ready to meet them anywhere. Oh, no. If they think that INEC's procedure has been subverted, if they think that INEC has subverted the provision of the law in releasing the results, we will meet them anywhere in court. Because we say that there is no such provision legally binding on INEC. Legally binding on INEC. And that overrides provision of both the Constitution and the Electoral that says that results must be, must be uploaded before they are declared. What the law still re re recognizes is the manual step-by-step -step collation until the announcement of the results at the National Collection Center as provided for by law. That's it. There is nothing. And let me tell you this. Is I want you to, to simply the ask the for PDP. It's not got, I mean, for the LP, they have come to call for the cancellation of the results. Fair. You know, well and good. We will meet them anyway. But for the PDP, I want you to ask a critical question to all these uh, drama kings you have seen up and down, and making noise without substance. <laughs> have you picked up a particular result from a particular state and compared it with the ones your agent submitted? And tell the world which unit has been altered, which word result has been altered, which state result has tell the world. Because your objection was be based on act, actual figures that were manipulated, not on the procedure. Many people cannot tell us now that they have not seen results from their own agents. I therefore challenge them. I want to challenge PDP. Publish results of the, from ECHS that your agents took pictures of. And use that to challenge results declared by INEC at the National Population Center. It's very simple. So I want you to see through the smoke of what they are doing. <laughs> I hope you understand me. Yeah. Let INEC tell us, let PDP tell us, in a particular state, of show us all your from ECHS, Show us all the results sheets entered at the world level and tell the world which discrepancy did you see with the ones announced at the National Collection Center. So, gentlemen, I want to say at the end of the day that what is happening in the PDP and all the drama you see from those uh, characters at the National Collection Center is nothing 
But form in a tea cup. There's no substance in what they are saying and doing. Thank you. Thank you. No, no. Wait. Let me let me say a few things. Thank you. It's on. It's on. It's on. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen, let me just let me just um, add to what um, Dilly has said and what uh, my brother Festus has said. Um, and I just want to say a couple of things very quickly. First of all, it's very clear that the words of Dino Milai and his behavior today, it's like Shakespeare, a, t a tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying absolutely nothing. And we need to be very careful at this stage. We are confident of victory. We know that we are going to win this election because we've done our research, but we don't make noise. We want everybody to be cool, everybody to be calm, as we coast to that victory. But what they are doing is trying to heat up the polity, provoke us, intimidate our voters and our supporters, threaten us morning, day and night, and ensure that we react to them. We won't do that. But one thing I will say, just to add to what everybody else has said, and if you don't remember anything that I've said today, please remember this. The minute those results are announced, and we, by the grace of God, are declared as the winner, we will defend our votes. No matter what Pastor Paul Eneche, um, Dino Milai, and all the rest of them say, Dele Momodu, all the rest of them, no matter what they say or do, particularly the obedience, who have intimidated and threatened our voters, beaten our voters in some parts, particularly in the East, beaten our voters and our supporters. I have all the evidence here on my phone. Threatened them, particularly the women. There's nothing they haven't been subjected to. The minute that result is announced, we will not be intimidated. We will defend our votes. We will protect this mandate. And those that have the idea of a June 12th annulment by creating crisis because they didn't win, they should perish the thought. It will not happen under this watch, by God's grace. Thank you. Yeah. Questions? Uh, thank you very much, sir. My name is Gideon Rutusi. I work for the mission. Uh, this morning, Lagos result was released. And the uh, Labour Party uh, had a day in Lagos. What is the position of PCC as well as the position of your principal? Thank you very much uh, for that question. Yeah, we all saw what emerged in Lagos. Uh, the results that, that came out today. Uh, the Labour Party had uh, a very slight uh, lead, but a lead all the same, you know. And uh, honestly, we have always said this, and I did say it a few moments ago, that our candidate is the avatar of democracy in this season, in this country today. He has fought strenuously to enthrone this democracy, he has acted in government to deepen this democracy, and he has demonstrated his commitment on alloyed, on a vow to democracy. So he's taking it in his stride. We are all taking it in our stride as committed Democrats, because we do not want anything to derail this democracy, hard fought for and hard won. Now, those who are bellyaching all around, mm. issuing threats, that if they do not win, there will be fire and brimstone and all that, I ask you, how many of them were in the barricades fighting for this democracy? Mm. They were not there. Yeah. So they do not appreciate democracy. They do not understand the dynamics and nuances and the convention of democracy. So they have no stake in this democracy, that's why they can say there will be fire and brimstone. In fact, some obedience have been calling for the return of the military if Absolutely. they are not declared the winner Absolutely. of this election. And that is very, very sad. Be arrested. That will show you that these are not Democrats. And I, I repeat, I repeat, because they never took part in the democratic struggle, they never acted in deepening and sustaining this democracy. It is easy for them to want to scuttle it. But those of us who are part and parcel of the democratic struggle, we knew what we went through. Our principal went through the crucibles, harassment, oppression, suppression, and the whole works to get this democracy in place. So 
we are prepared to nurture it. And the result in Lagos is also an eloquent testimony to the fairness of this process. If anything, any lesson is to be drawn from the Lagos result today, it is that when Ashiwajubola Metinumbu is eventually declared by the umpire, Einek, as the legitimately elected president of this country, nobody should complain Absolutely. about the process because the process has been demonstrably fair and just as exemplified by the results in Lagos, which we are not even contesting now. We are taking it in our strides as Democrats, but it is a testimony to the freeness and fairness of this process. So let nobody come and complain when we are declared the winner that, oh, they've been rigged out. If we did not rig them out in Lagos, we are not about to rig them out anywhere else. So our victory is established and verified by what has happened in Lagos today. Thank you. Sorry, there's somebody. I We're currently live from Abuja at a press briefing by the APC Presidential Campaign Council. We've heard from Dele Alake, who was a media advisor to the Presidential Campaign Council, who implored the police to immediately restrain Dino Melaye, Dele Momodu, and Pastor Nechi for what he is calling alleged incitement of violence. Uh, Dina Malaya via social media, Dele Momodu via television, and Pastor Nechi via the pulpit. Uh, he accused both the Labour Party and the PDP of planning a street insurrection and of subverting planning to subvert the will of the people. That is uh, currently happening live from Abuja. Also uh, seemed to have been a response to the broadcast we saw earlier by the uh, uh, Director for Strategic Communication for the PDP, that's Dele Momodu. Several back and forths happening. However, what they did clarify, what Bayo Onanuga did clarify during this press briefing is that they are not trying to join these issues, they're not trying to join the issue that uh, result sheets should be loaded up onto the BVAS, on, onto the IREV, excuse me. Uh, that, that's not why they've called this press conference. They've called this press conference specifically because they feel that their opponents are, uh, feel that they are losing and are ready to play dirty tactics. These are their allegations. For me, even by I'm thinking, um, when I see stuff like this, it's, 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 it might incite a reaction from supporters, which I don't think, and you know, from what we heard earlier on by the from, former president um, of South Africa, Tabon Beki, where he was urging for restraint. I think right now everybody just needs to sit back and let the process play out because tempers are high, there's a lot of distrust in the air, and you know, making statements like this, whether it's just, whether it's the APC, PDP, or whatever party, you know, making um, different, addressing the press and making different allegations, calling for different actions, it might incite a reaction and actually fuel the fire as opposed to dousing the tension. I don't know how you feel about well, that. Well, no, I, I think it speaks to the fact that this is a very competitive election and it's exciting and the two parties are trying to preempt each other with whatever results come, you know, come forward. Your, your point is well noted. You want to make sure you don't incite anyone. But it's, it's incredibly exciting. It's, it's um, you know, competitive. They've both referenced the Labour Party 
And so very interesting.